Sunny watched in horror as her life savings disappeared before her eyes. All her hard work and sacrifice gone in just 30 minutes and there was nothing she could do. To make matters worse, Sunny thought she was dealing with her bank. The hardest thing for me is to stop blaming myself. Like, um, I keep blaming myself. Maybe I should have noticed it more earlier somehow. We've reached a point that scams are so sophisticated that an individual customer cannot protect themselves against a scam. How is anyone to know that's a scam? I, I Exactly, that's why like my guard was down and I just thought it was HSBC. Sunny Wan is trying to come to terms with the fact she's lost her life savings. I've cried so much already, like the last two days. I went to work in the office yesterday and I just couldn't function. Caught out by sophisticated scammers, but her bank claims it's not their fault. I've just lost my whole savings and the guy was just like saying, all the best. It was Friday night two weeks ago when Sunny received a text from her bank, HSBC. It alerted her to a new device logging into her account. Because that was came from HSBC number, um, I didn't really think and I just clicked on that number and called that number. She quoted the reference number from the text message, the scammer then telling her a phone in Perth had logged into her account. And then he goes, well, there's been some uh, another device that's been logged in, the Samsung S8 phone. And then I, it, I coincidentally did lose an S8 phone a few years ago. Sunny panicked, thinking someone had her old phone and had access to her account. He said that he needs to go through the verification process um, to ensure that it is me, as all HSBC or any bank represent representatives do. Sunny gave them her full name, address and date of birth. Then the scammer asked her to generate a one-time passcode on her own phone for security reasons. I generated, I gave that number to him. And then I received a text message saying a device has been removed from my account, which is the H from the HSBC number again. Sunny thought she'd just saved herself from financial disaster. But all that information was everything the scammers needed to clean her out. And then he said, like, there's been some unusual activities. And he put me on hold quite a while. When the scammer finally took her off hold, he started to ask about Sunny's cryptocurrency account too, saying it had been compromised and that rung alarm bells. I finally like, like clicked to me, like, why would HSBC be concerned about my coin spot and they wouldn't pass my details to a representative. They would tell me to call coin spot directly. Sunny immediately hung up and called HSBC. She asked staff to freeze her account, but it was too late. The next morning at a HSBC branch, her worst fears confirmed. It was like basically my whole savings, like 49,900, 50,000. So I Scammers had managed to spoof the HSBC number, sending the fake message in the same thread as more than a year's worth of legitimate messages from the bank. Sunny's big mistake, calling the phone number sent to her. I was aware not to click on links and emails or attachments and things like that. I'm quite, I'm usually on guard, but because I think the, the text message came from the HSBC number, I, I let my guard down. It's not the first time the sophisticated scam has caught people out. Earlier this year, Tim Watkins lost more than $200,000 when scammers sent him a similar message, pretending to be his bank, NAB. The text basically said, here is the passcode that you will require. If it wasn't you or you didn't request this, please call this number. His bank told him he was liable for the fraud as Tim had also handed over a one-time passcode. 
how on earth could they allow 10 payments going to two different banks and completely new payees for $222,000 in 13 minutes? How can they let that happen? We are absolutely in a crisis. Last year, Australians lost well north of $3 billion to scams. The major banks reimbursed just 2 to 5% of customers' scams losses. The situation is completely dire. Since January this year, Australians have lost more than $16 million to bank impersonation scams. Stephanie Tonkin from the Consumer Action Law Centre says it's time for the banks to step up. They are in the position to be able to stop scams, to be able to disrupt scams. They need to be on the hook to reimburse their customers because that reimbursement will incentivise the investment needed to disrupt the scams problem in this country. After the, all this experience, um, I don't think I can trust the banks anymore. I mean, I think I will just withdraw money and just stash it under the bed like what people used to do in the old days. HSBC told us it wouldn't comment on this case. The bank did say that it has seen an increase in text spoofing, reminding customers that it will never ask for pins or passwords over the phone. That, of course, applies not just to HSBC but to all banks. So take heed, be on guard against the scammers.